What would happen if your town were attacked by chemical weapons? The feds are preparing for just that. Starting today in New York City, a team of researchers is releasing non-toxic gases and particles, including in some parks and subway stations. Local officials reaffirm these test gases are not dangerous and pose no threat to the public. The goal here, see how biological agents spread in densely populated urban settings. In New York City, here's CNBC's Valerie Castro. Three, two, one, go. The white puff you see shooting out into the air along subway trains is part of a scientific experiment that took years to plan and will take days to execute. It's part of a study led by the Department of Homeland Security and scientists from MIT called the Urban Dispersion Threat Program. We worry not just about uh, terrorism, but also something accidental, whether it's a, a release of a biological material or a chemical material. And all of this is really to get a better understanding of how a hazardous aerosol material would transport above and below ground. Here's how it'll work. Over a two-week period, scientific materials, both solid and gas form, are released into the air around New York City in several subway stations and above-ground locations like Times Square. The particles that you can see are sugar-based, while the gas is a mix of carbon, hydrogen, and fluorine. It's not toxic. It, it has no odor. There's also sampling and sensory equipment already set up at 120 locations throughout the city, New Jersey, and some of the airports to capture and analyze how far the materials travel. They're uh, essentially like a vacuum pump that has a filter, and th those filters are getting collected on a daily basis by sampling teams um, going to those sites, and then those filters will get processed in the laboratory. Officials say the data collected will help them develop emergency response plans in the event of an accidental or intentional incident involving hazardous materials. If there were an actual event in the future, the agencies in New York City, they would know how to take actions much more quickly because we're providing them with information that helps them to shape their policies and their emergency protocol. Shep, this same test was also conducted in 2016 using the exact same kind of materials, but at that time it was only run down in the subway system. Today they added the above ground testing portion as well. DHS officials say this testing will only happen in New York City, but they will be sharing the information that they learn here with other large cities around the country, especially those that have big public transportation systems, so they can plan and prepare for the future.